It's been just about six months since Apple revealed their brand new redesigned M2 MacBook Air, and now that I've had a lot of time to just sit and think about this new MacBook and where the value truly lies, I'm convinced that this is the most refined MacBook design that has ever come from Apple. And to think that you can now find it on sale basically everywhere, there's literally never been a better time to buy a base MacBook model. Well, actually, I am wrong. I do think that the next iteration of this MacBook is gonna be even better for multiple reasons, as I'll get to in just a minute, but that MacBook will pack a lot of the similar features that we already have in this one. In fact, the design will likely stay exactly the same. So with that said, let me get into what makes this one so special. I've been using my own personal 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro at home for the past year, and I've gotten used to the very heavy and quite thick design, basically becoming normal to me, especially since the large and excellent display and the speakers more than make up for it. But I was recently using the M2 MacBook Air at the office and I was blown away by how thin the design is. With the lid open, the bottom keyboard section is so thin it doesn't even seem possible for a crazy powerful computer to sit inside of it alongside batteries that last a crazy long time. Then I just started looking at the design and really appreciating all the subtle touches and changes that Apple made to make it look so clean. For example, there's not a single MacBook Air logo on it with Apple removing it from the chin section, leaving us with a clean, dark strip. And they didn't even engrave it into the bottom like they did for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. There's literally just an Apple logo on the back and I love that. Now you may have not noticed, but Apple also made the trackpad a bit wider than it was before, giving you more trackpad real estate, which is always good to have. I'm also pleasantly surprised by the quality of the speakers, despite Apple removing the speaker grills completely for a cleaner look. And just like before, they added the notch, which allowed them to thin out the bezels and make them curve around the top corners. And even though many people complained about the notch, I seriously do not notice it at all these days. It's just become so normalized that it doesn't even matter anymore. So with that said, the M2 MacBook Air gets my own personal best MacBook design ever award and I can't wait to see what Apple does with it in the future, specifically if Apple actually moves forward with a 15 inch MacBook Air that's been in the rumor pipeline. That would be absolutely incredible because it would fix the limited display size issue that some people have with this one, and it would make it feel even thinner because of the wider and larger design, sort of how the 12.9 inch iPad Pro seems impossibly thin for its size. The truth is that no other laptop or tablet maker can compete with Apple's combination of thin design and battery life. There's just no competition. Now moving on from that, one of my favorite features that often gets overlooked is the MagSafe 3 connector, which I absolutely love using at home with my current MacBook Pro, and it's even more important on this Air because it only comes with two Thunderbolt ports, so having MagSafe is a game changer. Previously, the old M1 model didn't have this, so you always had to use one of the Thunderbolt ports for charging, leaving you with just one left for connecting accessories and whatever else, so that MagSafe port on the new Air is a game changer for me. Now the one area where it's a little bit of a hit or miss is the performance, but before I get into that, I wanna show off our sponsor, Exter's huge Cyber Monday sale, which includes this 13 inch laptop sleeve made out of genuine top grain leather with a discreet magnetic closure and a bunch of pockets on both sides for all of your accessories 
and it also fits the 14 inch MacBook Pro, so check it out using the links below. Now getting back to the hit or miss performance, I've been using my basically fully maxed out 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro for the past year, and I've realized that it's pretty much overkill in terms of what I've actually been doing with it. Yes, I've edited a few videos and played a few games, but to be completely honest, I would have been just fine with M1 performance. But now thinking about you guys, prospective buyers who could be choosing between an M2 MacBook Air and a crazy heavy hitting 16 inch MacBook Pro, I'm actually leaning more and more towards recommending the M2 because it simply handles so much for the price. It does just fine with common video editing, music production, programming, and much more. And the major benefit is that the M2 chip excels at single core tasks, which leads to snappier web browsing performance as we've seen using the Speedometer 2.0 web browsing benchmark. Now, of course, there are those of you who actually need a lot more performance on a regular basis. And to you, I say, go for the 16 inch or maybe even the 14, or actually just wait until March for the new models to come out. But for everyone that's kind of on the fence and is trying to convince themselves that they need the most performance available, even though deep down, they know they mostly just browse the web, I would say you should be going for the M2 Air, especially for this super nice and thin design. But now we're met with a dilemma. In less than one year, there will likely be a brand new M3 MacBook Air that'll be coming with a host of benefits and maybe even a 15 inch model if that's something you'd be interested in. So let's get into what that's gonna look like. First off, the biggest new feature is in the name, the M3 chip. After following the supply chain, it's pretty clear that this new chip will be based on TSMC's brand new three nanometer chip technology, which should see a pretty massive improvement in efficiency and performance per watt. This essentially means that the future MacBook Air will have less thermal throttling issues, better battery life, and higher performance as well. Now, if you didn't already know, the current M2 chip is basically a stopgap product based on the same M1 chip as before, but simply tuned up overclocked and slightly redesigned to include more memory bandwidth, among other things. But as far as the actual efficiency, it's quite a bit worse than the M1 chip. In Cinebench R23, the M2 required about 36% more power to give us around 11 to 13% more performance. It also didn't really give us a performance boost in terms of playing back more tracks in Logic Pro, so both of those things stream overclocked. But the new M3 chip will come with a brand new three nanometer design with major improvements across the board, and this might be a big enough deal by itself to get people to upgrade. But other than that, we might even see some other surprise upgrades like potentially adding Face ID support, Bluetooth 5.3, Wi-Fi 6E, and maybe even 5G cellular service on your MacBook. But besides that, we haven't really received many leaks or rumors concerning the other features we could be seeing, but honestly, I think that this upcoming M3 MacBook Air won't be that much different, and it'll likely stick to internal changes like the M3 chip and not much else. So if you don't really care that much about the internal things and you care more about the design, right now is really the best time to buy this M2 model. Unless of course, you're holding off for the possibility of a 15 inch MacBook Air, but there are no guarantees. Either way, I'm really happy with this laptop and how Apple pulled off the redesign, basically nailing it and giving the common person the perfect laptop for a variety of use cases. So that just about sums it all up. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, click the circle about to subscribe and check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.